Sound? What is that? A really big squid. Are you ready for drinking? Drawing? What about laughing? Well, hold on to your butts. It's the Comics Friday Night Drink and Draw. With your hosts Sizzle and Spedzi. And the man they call Quid. Plus Australia's most attractive artists and creators. Many of whom have books for sale at comics.shop. Hey, Sizzle. What say we start the shizzle? Kookaburras mock you. They're not cool. Nah, uh, I'm down with kookaburras. <laughs> Hell oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, 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 Hello, everyone. Um, we're here every week to bringing together some of Australia's greatest artists, as you can see, um, uh, to draw a character of the special guest this week. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, this week's special guest is none other than Elster Lockhart of uh, oh. Too Many Things to List fame, and our artist will be drawing his character, the mysterious Nobody. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. So this is a tough one. It's right. a big naked a guy. guy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you had me a naked guy. Well, if we're drawing naked dudes, shouldn't Chris be here? Hey. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the show. We're here every Friday. Um, Sorry, please do like and subscribe right, if you have a chance. Share it with a friend. And don't be shy to comment below. Um, you could also join us on a Facebook page. I wish I wrote down the name. It's just search co comics, drink and draw, and you will find the reference material for this guy that we are drawing. Nobody. And yet there he is with a body. What? Um, <laughs> here joining us tonight is Adelaide. That's a good own... one, Rob. Oh, thanks, mate. Exactly. Thank you. That, you only find that sort of support on a show like this. What a beautiful community. All right, quick Nick. How's it going, buddy? Good. I've got my first quick ready. Uh, someone really? said, Alistair said, a big, big naked guy. Here we go, ready? <laughs> Sharing. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, big. It's Conan O'Brien. Can you share that on YouTube? That's a bit rude. Yeah, it's, it's a shame that big black bar is blocking out his... Anyway, um, also <laughs> from Adelaide is Nathan Gritsky? Gritsky? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that yeah, that's right. <laughs> nice. Um, also from Adelaide, it's the All Adelaide Show. DK, Dana, how are you going? Hello. I'm good. <laughs> uh, the man who is a radical, it is Edmund Kearsley. What up, Ed? Hello. I did buy a and... man bottle. Today, so hey. just in case anyone Ooh, nice. <laughs> Is that a globe? Remind me to ask you about those globes in the background too, because they're crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alexander Major, how are you, sir? Uh, bonjour tout le monde, ça va? <laughs> it, yep, that's yeah, exactly yep. what she said. Okay. Um, and of course, the man who we are here to celebrate, the man whose ears are so important, their high viz, uh, it's <laughs> Alistair Lockhart. <laughs> Woo! Hello. Now, Alistair, I do believe you were part of this book. This yep. would be your cover as well. Yeah. Can you tell us about this uh, long-haired guy with the scars all over his body and a loincloth? Um, well, the lore goes back, oh, several minutes. Um, uh, in all honesty, the story just started with the, um, the idea was uh, it was originally published in Decay, famous Aussie comic. Nice. And yeah, uh, yep. and it was it was Cos's idea. He said, "Oh, um, I want a story about two two immortals fighting in a sawmill because uh, because Cos likes his gore." Yeah. Um, <laughs> by golly, does he ever! And uh, and I remember thinking, sawmill. That's going to take up a whole lot of time. Maybe a snowy mountain. Those are easy. <laughs> so. <laughs> so um, it was a bit of a cop out. It was one of those things where you know the um, uh, the story just came out of like, okay, so he's on the mountain and they're going to have a fight. What's the reason for the fight? And it all just kind of uh, the story grew from there. It was written in the Stephen King method, where he starts with an idea and just has no idea what's going to happen at the end. Mm. Which, in my humble opinion, uh, is why his endings are often a bit. <laughs> And so you were inspired hey, that's to me. follow in his footsteps, were you? Well, uh, um, I, I really wasn't expecting it to turn out the way it did. I just kind of had the idea and the page count, and I thought, well, you know, there's there's got to be a fight, there's got to be a reason, and you know, now I have to put in text some kind of supposed. So now the characters have to have some kind of motivation. So 
Yeah. Um, it all just went from there. Um, but uh, this, uh, the version that appears in uh, Noir is the uh, the special edition. And and and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did a bit of a George Lucas on it because um, I remember sort of looking over the old version of the story and thinking, um, okay, so that doesn't work. And nobody seems to know exactly what has happened at this point because there was a point where it was a bit sort of vague and nebulous. And I thought, I'm being clever. No, I wasn't. Um, <laughs> I was being I was being abstruse. And so um, I changed it and I added a couple of pages and uh, fixed a couple of the panels that I thought were a bit dodgy. Uh, and so that's the version that's appearing in uh, Presents. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Of course, uh, we are talking about Comex Presents Noir, which, uh, oh, sorry. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I've got that T-shirt. Ah. <laughs> they just gave it to you when you were born. Like, you just earned, it's like a title. Oh, it was, yeah. it was expected. Um, I, I. <laughs> Um, I was I learned to read before I started school because I was jealous of my brother being able to read and my parents thought I was a child prodigy. And oh the years of disappointment that were to follow. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so we, of course we are talking about uh Comex Presents Noir number three, which uh is available on Kickstarter right now. Uh correct me. Oh, I was just gonna say presents.comex.studio. Uh yes, yes get involved. Out. Uh, and just to um, steal the attention away from Alistair just for a second, I'm just going to show you some. So we saw that's uh, Alistair's cover. You can see Detective Budgie, Rosie, yeah. and the man with no body. And, and also the and cat's in the middle. It's straight bang in the middle. That's what people are going to come in for, a little smoky little cat. <laughs> that inspired by the song, right. Cat's in the Middle and the Lady that's in the exactly Blade. Right. The, there's a budgie in the <laughs> sky and a guy with cuts. Um uh, it doesn't scan. You could work on that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's the only one oh, that's doing Santa. <laughs> Alex Major. Going, that is he's playing it. Yeah, he's playing checkers. Hardcore I love checkers. the I love the hand in the in the upper right hand that's got the fan. The fan is essential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is blowing the head. Yes. Uh, Maybe he's born course. with it. <laughs> Cleary, though, uh, Nick, play it on him. Let him know what he do. Well, what did he do? Oh, well, oh, Dave's here as well. There's Dave Dye. Even Detective Fungi, hands and arms and fingers and such, which is a, a big no-no. Alex, is it too late to go back to the drawing board? You put you put arms on Detective Budgie. Uh, I can fix <laughs> it if it goes before print. They're I'm really, really print. thin wings. He's the only <laughs> budgie in, well, the only bird in Avian City who has wings. And you draw him with arms. <laughs> Alan Moore style revisionism. It's okay, I'll fix that. I'll, I'll fix that for you. It, it's a major plot point for later in the book, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, spoilers, come on. And then Quick Nicholas, uh, Nick Cleary, his cover for yeah. Presents Noir. Very nice. right nice. now Note the wings, cover. Alex. Big wings. Oh, yeah, Nick totally got the budgie right. <laughs> How's your cat looking, Alex? Fair game. If you want to rag on him <laughs> yeah. about the cat, you go for it. Yeah, no worries. I'm not that. I'm, I'm not an asshole, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, assholes, Dave Dyes joined us. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, hi, Dave. That I think my... you're yeah, a beautiful it. man, by the way. So, <laughs> so we know we are, it's not Dave. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we have Presents, which is uh, on Kickstarter at the same time with Noir. Same it's time, a two yeah. for one. Well, it's not two for one. You have to buy them both. But uh, mm -hmm. there's Peter Wilson's cover. That's a great cover. So good in. Enjoy it. It's awesome, mate. Eh? Final Dragon, very much alive. <laughs> I like it how just uh, because of my brief then, appearance in Adelaide in 1983. Ed's, that crew. Ed's is awesome. I love that. Mm. Yeah. It's a, trying, to get the, trying to get the feel of the 80s arcades with the. Yeah, the, the 80s arcade. I love the poster. You got it. All yeah, the no drinks kids. on the machines, and there's a milk shake. great. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Ed, this cover came out really good. I love it. Thank you. Uh, and then this Jamoke. <laughs> oh, Rob Lowe. Yeah. I'm thinking. 
That's that's a good cover too. That's right. <laughs> I love the theme. <laughs> the running theme. Chasing the, the alien. Broman looks confused though. Is there but, a story behind why Broman looks confused? Uh, because I'm not very He's good. Like, what at am I doing in this? Oh, what's, <laughs> he's confused about the devil. That's the she's best hard. I can do, Alex. Go. <laughs> Leave me alone. No, I like it. I was just thinking there's a story behind it. I thought she had like, a cool little story. Go like, Try oh, the devil's bed. telling her a joke and she's not getting it or something. <laughs> <laughs> she's maybe thinking someone, about Maybe arms. someone just gently criticized her and she took it too harshly. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> But back to Alistair. Um, now, we've had you on the show before, but for those mm. who don't know, take us back. When did you realize you can draw? Oh, God. Um, so I think when I was five years old. Wow. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I like to draw because it was the only thing that I ever did that anybody praised uh, that's it. Oh my God. It takes me back. No, um, I had, when I was a kid, I was undiagnosed. I had undiagnosed ADHD and, uh, you know, it was Scotland in the seventies. So if you suggested that such a thing existed, you would have got laughed at. Um, so yeah. Um, so drawing pictures, is the only thing I ever got praised for. So I think when I was like five or six, I said to my mother, and I remember this. She was in the kitchen working really hard as she did. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to draw pictures and write stories. And she said, yeah, what else? <laughs> Go and play with your brother. So, um, <laughs> and so uh, apparently I meant it because um, uh, I think as a lot of uh, artists experience it. So, um, uh, until you're 12, you know, your parents don't mind you drawing pictures or, uh, as an example, playing video games until you're about 12 years old, because it keeps you silent and immobile. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're still doing it when you're 16, you start to have you, you start having to have conversations about when you're going to get serious about something. <laughs> and uh, and then, unfortunately, as I found out, if you're still doing it when you're 19. <laughs> um, if, if you think I'm going to waste any more money on you, well, you sit here and waste your time with this noise. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you, you don't get a lot of encouragement or support. Um, and uh, I think it's important to note that, especially in the case of your parents, they mean it out of absolutely the best, your, your best interests. You know, they, mm. they, they're only trying to get you to do something that they see as serious. Uh, but it's just because they don't, not only do they not get it, they actually don't have any frame of reference for what it is that you're doing. Yeah, I remember I've, I worked in the game for 17 games industry for 17 years, and I could never really talk to my father about it because he literally didn't have a clue what I was talking about. The only computer game he ever played was solitaire. Mm. So after you've drawn the picture of the spider, what do you do for 17 years? <laughs> um, so, so he would say, how's work going? And you go, oh, you know, it's great. The project is, uh, is going along at the moment. We're, uh, we're almost at the alpha stage and uh, the engine's finished. And you would just see his eyes kind of glaze over and <laughs> wander away to the side. And he was just waiting for you to finish so that he could nod his head and say that he was pleased. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's simply that um, everybody who tries to talk you out of what it is that you're good at and what you love, it's just because they don't know what they're talking about, no matter what they might claim to know. No matter how smart they think they are or seem to be, um, if you know yourself, then you just know. So um, I, no matter how often I was discouraged, I thought, no, this is the only thing that makes sense. Mm. So I just kept on drawing and, uh, and now I do it for a living. So, of course, by definition, I don't really enjoy it that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's not true but yeah um i uh, if, if you spend all your time drawing goblins and spaceships then uh, i suppose after hours is usually when most people work on a comic which you're not going to be getting paid for mm. not too early anyway um so uh, if you've got any energy left over for anything you're not going to be using it for more of your work day so yes. uh, Whenever I uh, undertake a comic, it's usually going to be just a short story, and I usually 
go at it like a bull at a gate for a very short burst and just, you know, I'll take two weeks off and do that instead of my regular gig. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not often you can do that. I think I'm churning out about one every two years Yeah. at this stage. All right. Um, I'm so, not jumping um, down your throat with another question because that, that was an absolutely fascinating answer. <laughs> I was going away, though. Um, I mean it. That was, there was there's uh, some sound bites to go back and pull out of that. That um, uh, well, like I'm drawing, sound advice. I was uh, uh, I was teaching for a while uh, for about six years, and so I have whole spiels that I can kind of draw on. I was going to um, say, is there any way we can just can you go to spiel number two and just keep it going? That really cool. Well, that, that that thing about, you know, that's really the truncated version of the first day spiel is, uh, you know, whenever you talk about actively being discouraged from drawing mm. and you see, like, there's always five or five or six heads at the, in the classroom going like, like that because this is something that's it's a really common experience for all these kids. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, I met, uh, there was one girl who, she wasn't in the class yet, it was an open day, and uh, and I gave the spiel, and she came up, and she showed me her work, and uh, I said, well, if you want to learn animation, or filmmaking, or audio, then you can certainly do that at the school, but uh, as far as graphic design goes, there's nobody here that can teach you any more than you've already taught yourself. That's how good she was. Wow. And yet her parents at the age of that, she just had an astonishing amount of confidence and, uh, and practice for an 18 year old. And, uh, and her parents were still asking her when she was going to get serious about, you know, wife anomics, dishology, whatever it was that her parents thought was serious. Yeah. Um, and, uh, she got into art express, uh, nobody familiar with art. Yeah, express? I'm familiar with it. I, I remember no. not getting into it. <laughs> I don't I don't even know if they still do it. It's a it's a thing where they uh where they show the uh, the cream of the crop from all of the year 12 high school certificate art classes oh, yeah. across the country. Oh wow. So it's the best of the best. And she Strong. got into that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I, as I said I don't know if they even do it anymore but she got into that show and they made it a feature that was the painting that you saw as you went up the escalator there at the center point exhibition center oh wow and uh, she, she brought her parents and her grandparents in and she was like what do you think <laughs> hmm huh how about it best of the best of the best <laughs> and all four and they just kind of stood there and looked at it for a bit and except for her grandfather who was looking up and down the room and sort of pacing up and down and and checking out the corners and stuff like that. And he was the first one to speak. And he said, uh, when um, when are they taking it down? <laughs> what? He was looking at he was looking at the space. I'm uh, not sure what the man's business was, but he was looking at the space and going, boy, could I stack a lot of pallets in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. even the people who love you best will never encourage you. You really. So, uh, yeah. For the first for the first intake of kids who want to be artists, I'll say like congratulations for getting this far because you've had to wade through some chess eye shit to make it here. Well, I mean, look, I I, 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 our parents look at it because um, like I have issues with my parents and some of my mum mainly because uh, she told me when I got a, got a job at Disney, she was like, I don't know why you're so excited about it when she found out how much money I made because it wasn't that much money. <laughs> no. and, and, and I was like super excited because I'd be working on Disney films. And then and she was like, I don't know why you're excited about it. And then another time we met up and then she was like, I'm, she was, the thing she was proud of was that I didn't have a drug problem because she's like most <laughs> And yeah. she, I think what her parents are looking at is like, you can't be good at art. But you need a little bit more than good because you need to have some you need to have a business mind and there's all these other skills that you need that be outside of just drawing well and when mm. they see that they're really afraid that you're going to be pursuing this passion and everybody else is pursuing and then you might not get it and they, it's not that they don't believe but they just don't like the industry or whatever from the way they're exposed to it and i think sometimes it's not just not understanding but it's just a fear of 
that industry, which I think sometimes is pretty justified when you see how many people, talented people, singers, musicians, artists, filmmakers, get eaten up or thing. I think that's where it is sometimes. Do you think so? Or well, not really? Um, I uh, uh, I think that from their point of view, if they're if they're looking at a, an artistic life, uh, from their point of view, say if you said you were going to be an actor. What they know is that there is a small group of A-list actors and they're the ones that make the money and everybody else is broken, starving and working in porn. Um, and that's not the case. There's a vast, vast, vast volume of media that needs artists and actors and producers coming out mm. constantly, especially now. And all of that features jobbing actors whom you will never hear for, but make a personally de decent living doing what they're doing, okay they'll never be the A-list by definition, very few do. But um, yes, as an artist, I'm not Boris Vallejo, I'm not Frank Rosetta, I'm not Simon Bisley, the hope was there, it didn't pan out, but I've been able to make a living mm -hmm. uh, so far, never having had a proper job, really. So I call that a win. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So but, I had uh, a very... Just taking the devil's advocate, just to, in the sense that, Please. like, you know, why where the parents are coming from because i don't think all of them i don't think a lot of times because like you know we, we always need to have good relations with parents and i know that like you know like my <laughs> mom for instance she didn't want to she didn't wasn't like looking down saying whatever thing i'm a shitty artist or something like that she was just worried that you know and now okay i make i also make a living drawing pictures or moving pictures around mm. but you know, for some people, she'd be like thinking, oh, if you were like a lawyer or whatever, um, you'd be making more money and stuff. So I think that's where she, she was going in her defense. Yeah, okay. okay but um, do you want to be a lawyer? Have you always no, wanted I'm to happy, be a I'm lawyer? Happy. No, I'm happy. I'm just saying where they're this coming is, from. Well, yeah. th this is what I'm saying is that um, I, I do know lawyers. Um, uh, I've met one of them when she showed up to be a life model at one of the, uh, a life drawing class, and she genuinely loved the law. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I know her on Facebook and all of her posts are about how much she loves the law. I know nothing about the law, so I know nothing about how she feels. But, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're going to pursue a career, you have to love what you're doing. You have to love being a civil engineer and solving problems if you're going to build bridges. But mm -hmm. if you became a civil engineer because your dad thought it would make money, mm -hmm. um, then you're in the wrong gig. Uh, I think if you're and especially for people who are planning on making boatloads of money, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're planning on making that much money, you better be doing whatever it is that you're doing to make that money all of the time or very much most of the time you're awake. Mm. And if what you're doing most of the time you're awake makes you miserable, then having all that money will never, ever help you. No. So you're better off being broke and happy. I mean, look at my clothes. <laughs> You're wearing Batman, dude. That's that's flex. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've right, yeah. got, no, got no branding on my fancy shirt. I've just got my yes, cat. My, my yeah, that's important branding, branding that one. So, you know, this is what all the cool kids like. So there you, you go. Want be, if you want to meet, um, if you want to impress people, just cap here. Yeah, they go for 420 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get sent my free T-shirt yet. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very similar upbringing because my parents are. I was I was um, born and raised in England uh, in uh, Australia, but my parents are from Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're very working class, and and doing art and making comic books is not a job. Yeah, Lee could have stay to you. Yeah, they, <laughs> Luke they, could have stay to you with your comic boots. Yeah, real <laughs> lad. Were your comic books? <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was very much the same thing. As the, that's not a job. You will never get a job doing that. Like you can't do it. And that really, uh, like it, it, it really set me back for a long time. Like, so just getting into it now in my forties, like that, um, having that that pressure. It's like that's that's not a job. You'll never do it. You can't do it. You have to do. You have to get a shit job. Like any job is better than. Than art because art's not a job. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, as I say, um, it's not that. And you say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're operating outside of their field of expertise. Because they had they had no reference for it, and they would 
they were trying yeah. to steer me away from like the, the getting into exactly. and, and stuff, which well, which is where I ended up anyway because I I got into the punk rock scene in the in Melbourne, but <laughs> as like a yeah the you know the the it's not because they're they're trying to be mean or that it's just because there's there's no frame of reference for them. Like doing a job is you go there, you work for eight hours, and then you come home, and that's and you're miserable the whole time. That's a job. Yeah, precisely. My uh, my old man was a farmer, and uh, when uh, when I was a kid, he said you need to go into computers. Uh, that's what that my brother did. Yeah. Um, you need to go into computers because that's where the money is going to be. Those things are going to be everywhere someday. Um, and uh, apparently, everybody got that advice because <laughs> um, IT. Uh, IT consultants are not difficult to find. No, you can get free advice online. You know, um, <laughs> if you post as Sandra comma twenty five, um, uh, which is what I always do when I need when I need IT advice. I post as Sandra comma twenty five. Nobody ever wants to help Alistair comma forty nine, but they're climbing over themselves to help Sandra comma twenty five. That's and even do you know like. So like yeah. that worked so well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I got a picture of Sandra here, uh, working for like <laughs> oh, yeah. everything, uh, right at home, just where he needs to be. Yeah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, if I told my brother, if I told my father, I want to be a Bricky's laborer at say sixteen. I mean, leave school and be a Bricky's laborer. He just would have shot me as a bad use of resources. Um, but I'd be a master builder today and myself and my ex-wife would be driving around in BMWs. So, <laughs> so, um, when somebody says to you in the future, you can safely ignore absolutely everything that they say after that point, because nobody <laughs> knows, no, no bastard has true. the bravest frigging clue. So nah. go your own way and stay happy for Christ's sake. Hey, it's not all bad. I know that DK's mum's quite a good supporter. What do you reckon, Dana? Yeah, she is. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Yeah, she's always supported me because um, um, she used to do art herself. So I guess it oh, kind of yeah. came from her. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, she went to art school and did all the different types of art and mediums. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have been handy. You have somebody around who can say, well, so here's some missteps I made. Yeah, yeah. Here's some pitfalls that you can't avoid. And because of somebody who knows what they're talking about, then that's advice you can use. You can yep. listen to that. Yeah. yeah. But so, um, I've, got a, I've got a question then. Did you have, um, did you have, because if your parents were not helping, did you have any mentors that did help you? Did you have somebody in your life that was like pushing you, saying like a teacher at school or a friend or like, an uncle or like somebody else that was like kind of saying, Alistair, push forward, don't listen to them. There was always, there would, there would always be one or two teachers who would see what you're doing and go, goodness gracious me, that's impressive. But only ever one or two. Um, and of course, then there was the other teachers. And I remember one in particular who said to me, you're wasting your time, your parents' money and space in my school. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um so uh yeah uh but again he might as well have been talking chinese or just yeah, shouting out random words for all the sense that it made to me um and it's not like i was like that that willful kid who went like no i'm going to follow my passion it was just like i'm sorry you're not making any sense drawings a drawing is just a thing i do <laughs> it's rough, rough. It's like uh, what, what, so, what school was this was this like a tertiary school or a high school um it was a high school um my father sent me to uh, a private school uh, kinross Loy in orange okay and um uh yeah uh, i was a boarder there for four years but you know i'm i'm, I'm okay now <laughs> i'm okay <laughs> um and uh, yeah, uh, uh, it was all about 
uh, as a student at that school, your priorities were in order. The Queen, you know, God, the Queen, and the reputation of the school. Um, and football was in there somewhere. Somewhere below drama was being good at drawing. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Is that a BMW there? That's not yeah. my car. That is being red. <laughs> it's missing the little bit at the front, you know, the little two thingies. I mean, wheels. Mm. Sorry, not wheels. It's got the wheels. <laughs> uh, I'm not really. It looks like I'm not a not a good enough car guy. Somebody, please help me out, Dave. And what happened, not? Alex? You, you, were, <laughs> you were not um, wanting to uh, critique anyone's like drawings before. Well, last night. about it. <laughs> <laughs> what about some wings on it, Alex? What do you reckon, mate? <laughs> no arms, just wings. Just go show it on my iPad, but then I was like, oh, no, it's not this kind of show. So, <laughs> but, uh, as Zach, as I just pointed out, there is always one teacher that, you know, will find you and go like, no, just... They'll look behind them and then go, like, this is really good. You know, I had a science teacher who was one of those guys where you're supposed to be doing chemistry. Forget about that. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> no, you know, you, there's no point in you pursuing chemistry at all. Just keep doing this. So, yeah, he was great. Uh, I, Mr. Uh, Veenstra, he died the other year. Very sorry to see him go. Um, you know, I, I had an art teacher who I don't even remember what she was telling me off about, but she was telling me off while looking at my work and she said you can obviously draw but blah 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 and that's all i heard and i was like obviously like please like <laughs> as though it was a throwaway comment but it, i was like no i need to hear that because <laughs> like, I, was, I was failing art theory and everything and it was a throwaway yeah. comment but man i hung I, <laughs> yeah. everything else blanked out except that you can obviously draw and i was just like all right yeah I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of got the same thing with it. I did a graphic design. Um, I did a degree in a bachelor of graphic design at Newcastle. And I was constantly getting in trouble by just doing an illustration as well as I could and then slapping some typography over the top of it, you know, and going, yeah, there you go. Mm. Um, and I was always looking for um, uh, holes in the brief. Uh, there was a packaging assignment where I believe one time the, um, the idea was to make a little box of some kind to make a physical package. And I did a poster for a comedy show. And they said, that's not a package. And I said, how else do you package a show? And they said, but it's not a product. And I said, why does it have a producer? Holy shit. And they couldn't argue that. So they, they begrudgingly gave me a distinction. Um, <laughs> I believe they write their briefs a little more carefully now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I was constantly getting in trouble for that. It's just another illustration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but sometimes our teachers, like I remember my art teacher was saying, you'll never use, because like, I always like drawing for mechanical pencil before there was an iPad. So I was always drawing yeah. for mechanical They said, oh, you'll never use that in real life for drawing. And I was like, for what? And then when you go to Disney, that's all you do for cleanup. Because our first job there is you're in betweening and cleanup. And then, um, yeah, they just, you just use a mechanical pencil. Nobody uses like a, a real yeah. pencil cleaner. You're like, uh, that's... who are these people? Uh, you'll, you'll often get like, no true yeah, artist yeah, would yeah. ever use, no true artist would ever use an eraser. Oh, it really? Uh, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> I'm a plumber. Uh huh. Okay. Well, fuck off, and then come back and fuck off again, so that we both know that you can get that right. <laughs> uh, basically, the lesson is if you're um, watching this show, don't listen to your art teacher. They're assholes. <laughs> well, that said, though, Alex, uh, um, Alistair, you're are you a teacher or are you like a you do guest speaking or what do you do? Um, well, uh, I did a little speaking, but uh, yeah, I was a, a lecturer in uh, uh, illustration design, game design for about six years. Uh, so I think you're a right teacher because. Yeah, I mean, I had out of all my teachers, I had one teacher who just got me, and like we had to write a a daily diary thing, and I always tried to make mine funny and whatever. Um, 
and she was always she made a comment about looking forward to reading mine and stuff and she she is almost 100 percent responsible for me thinking i could be a writer um yeah um but i mean you sound like the sort of teacher where holy shit you just want to keep them talking because they drop bombs is 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 that the case well um i um i figure i make them laugh make them smarter <laughs> uh for a start yeah. but uh, uh mostly because um you know they they do need the encouragement mm. to uh, to go out and be part of things um but uh, uh in other cases i also you know i'm uh, i'm usually fairly careful to warn them of the pitfalls uh for example in the modern age um if you're planning on having an online presence then you must must be extremely vigilant in keeping your online persona and your private life as two entirely separate entities. Tell us more about um, that. What do you mean? Uh, well, uh, um, the internet, uh, you know, it's a it's a very it's it's a more public space I think than we've ever had before, and there's. Uh, organized legions of trolls like the four channers of the world who will um, see a tree out your window and somehow manage to triangulate the location of your house from space mm. and um, and do something hilarious like have the swast boys visit your house in the middle of the afternoon um, battering down your door with a battering ram um, it's the kind of thing that you know that to you? Uh, uh, no, that's uh, that's never happened to me. But um... well, Alistair, just to shock you, I used to work in um, heating and air conditioning, and I can tell by that four-way blow uh, diffuser <laughs> above you um, that that's <laughs> only available in Southern Australia from a company called um, Taps R Us. Uh, they do plumbing as well. Um, so by just by looking at that vent, I can tell straight away. Well, no, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a six hundred yeah. six hundred four way diffuser though. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, no, it's um, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> you went to all that trouble to be in a in a trench coat and a hat, and the vent gave him away. Oh, amazing! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not unlike being um, say if you're a sex worker who has a, a lucrative. Only fans account. Oh, you no, don't I, want no. those. You don't want those fans knowing who you are or approaching you in your day-to-day -day life. That's the thing yeah. that you need to keep separate. Um, so, Alex, or you hear that? Make sure you keep it separate uh, with your only fans. Uh, um, <laughs> or Alex, uh, I have Alex a friend who's spotting on the on TikTok. So <laughs> he knows all the on I, TikTok, but on all yeah. only fans, he does. It's him farting. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Live I, uh, actually cosplay as my character, my TikTok character, and buy it in a jar and make it an NFT. Oh. <laughs> but I um. <laughs> I didn't make that. Yes, look out, for, look out for my OnlyFans <laughs> account coming soon. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> the poor OnlyFans who um branched into vents as well. OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> but um no you know what i mean if you've heard of people like phil fish uh who was yeah. he did he made a uh, he made a game called help me out here pa fez he made it fez that's right oh, yeah. the game uh, uh became also, a uh, an independent in phil, sleeper hit in phil fish's defense yes? he's a gigantic wanker he's like one <laughs> of the most um, people ever yeah. Well, yeah, and they're fairly common, but if the world finds out that you're a gigantic <laughs> wanker, then they're going to pile on you and destroy you just to have something to do. Yeah. Um, it, and you, you know, he really should be more careful. I have a friend who has a Twitch page that makes her a lot of money. And, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, this this girl has a she has a Twitch page and um, you know she wears a wig and she games and she yells and screams at the camera and I can't watch it because it's not her. And uh, I, when I was asking her about it, she said that she can't watch it either oh. because the character that the character that she plays on her Twitch stream is not the person she is, 
and um, you know, and she's, as I said, extremely careful to make to make sure that there is nothing in the frame that might identify her in any way. To be fair, um, I feel the same about this show. This this is a character. I have a black background. <laughs> Come find so, me, Four Chan. No, please don't. Actually. <laughs> These globes aren't actually in my house, so don't come looking for them. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at those uh, globes from a certain angle, they pinpoint exactly where Ed lives. He's deleting his only fans, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm just off the side of the multiverse, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Galactus does wear a, a baseball cap and headphones. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How do I wake Nathan? Nathan <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alistair, you're. you're um, Dropping knowledge bombs and we're interrupting with nonsense. Please continue. Well, it, uh, I think it's um, uh, yeah. As I say, that's uh, that's one of the more sort of universal warnings. Is you know your online presence must be a separate thing. Um, yeah. But there's also you know there's many pitfalls of the industry, especially in the game industry. Mm -hmm. um, understanding what uh, game development and working in the game development space has been like. Um, uh, and encouraging people to change it, you know, uh, people attempting to change it going in because um, it's still a massive sausage party. It's still rife with abuse of marginalized groups, uh, starting with women all the way down to trans women. Um, yeah, uh, unless you're a white male with a punch off for going to strip clubs, then uh, working in the games industry is, um, it, it, it's a space that needs to change and needs to change soon because that culture has uh, just become fixed. Uh, I actually had one student who stopped coming to my classes. I, you know, it's a 13 week course and I stopped seeing him after week two. And I said to her, um, and then at the end of the 13 weeks, his assignments just all appeared on the same day and they were great. And he got a distinction average. And I said to his mate, where's he been? And he said, he stopped coming to class because he couldn't listen to you talk about the games industry anymore. It was depressing him. But back it was now. it was it was depressing him. You know, going into the games industry, you're thinking, "Oh boy, this is going to be it's going to be everything I ever dreamed." And uh, no, it's um, uh, there are lots of perfectly great places to work in the games industry, but there are also lots of places that are not great. And if you find yourself in the kind of hole where you've been exploited or uh, marginalized or deliberately kept down or uh, or whatever then um, yeah it's it's a terrible shame when one's dreams become nightmares there are ways to avoid it but uh, you know the, the warnings kind of need to be there but it's not all that no but as it's kind of it's like I worked in the game industry for about three years in China and mm. I remember saying for in China it's very different there's a lot of ladies working there yeah, <laughs> uh, they've got other stuff going on there that's bad. The 996 fiasco, where you just work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week or overnight, and all this other stuff. But it's uh, mm. uh, interesting just to say, see that it's like very much like, like because I, I always come from like a Western East view, living in, in, in East for like over 10 years, and it's just seeing the mm. cultural difference. And it's very strange because, like, I've heard all the stuff with Activision recently. That's the big, big drama and stuff. And other and Blizzard, I think that was the big one, right? Yeah, Blizzard. Yeah. yeah. So you've got uh, hearing that, all that stuff, and and that exists there as well. Like you always, you've got like dudes on top who are sexually harassing stuff. But I remember, like, uh, my friend used to run Spicy Horse, uh, America McGee. So he, there was like lots of ladies at Spicy Horse working there. It's like very mixed, very mixed international and local and stuff like that. So it's, uh, so I'm just saying that's not. A, I mean, I don't know how to bring that. If there's a, do you think there's a way of bringing that atmosphere to the West, or if like, you know, you can add to that. As I say, every shop is different, and um, I, uh, uh, I personally have only really worked in. Uh, I've worked in four different games shops and uh, three of them very definitely had more of a family atmosphere to them. And, um, you know, uh, they were smaller Australian games companies. I've never worked for a, a massive games company like a Blizzard or an Activision where I'm assuming that kind of abuse can happen. But, um, 
Um, I have worked in two separate places, uh, not games exclusively, but two separate places where there was a, a familial kind of an atmosphere and then they would got, get bought out by a corporate parent and then the culture would change. And uh, yeah, in both cases, it was just like a couple of years before I thought, not nah, bar this, this just isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, if your job's making you miserable, like I say, uh, yeah, if, if if you have a job that it, your that its two defining characteristics are one, it makes you miserable, and two, you're terrified of losing it, quit that day, <laughs> because it won't be three minutes before you say to yourself, uh, "I should have done this years ago." And the same goes for relationships. <laughs> I can confidently assert, as a divorcee. That relationships are the same. <laughs> what games did so, you work uh, on? Right. I just got to go quit my wife. If you give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, oof, wow! I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> said that day, like today. Yeah. Nothing that, that I can is... say can be used as legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> Very it's easily Alan. influenced, aren't you, Spedzy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shane. Oh, so I was waving to someone. Oh, you're waving to somebody. Somebody had a question there. Alice, oh, I, just, I wanted to know right. um, what games have you worked on that, that we might know. Like <sighs> Nothing terribly auspicious. Um, you'll have heard of the properties. Um, there was a SpongeBob SquarePants game for the DS, a oh, Pixar's no. Cars game for the DS, uh, Spyro Dawn of the Dragon no. um, for the Nintendo DS. Uh, that was one of mine. Um, uh, Owls of Gahul. Uh, again, from the Nintendo DS, I was working at a place called Tantalus Interact. It's a fantastic place to work. Uh, and I was there for five years. And uh, yeah, they did handheld games. Yeah. Um, but uh, as I said, a great family atmosphere. Um, a great place to work. And then I moved on to Infinite, um, uh, which is now Infinite Plus Two, uh, with my good friend Steve Faulkner. Steve and I have been working, uh, have worked together since way, way back in the day. And he's. Uh, um, he's now working on Puzzle Quest 3. Oh, cool. Which oh, is... It's an Australian game. I keep forgetting. It was published, yeah. I think, by Nico a long time ago. It was an uh, game. The original Puzzle Quest, yeah. It was, uh, it was a minor sleeper hit back then. And, um, yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> okay. None of Alistair's comments should be construed with Comic Studios or any of the fine people they employ. <laughs> 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 uh, and so Thanks, did you um, concept, concept art for those games did you yeah um uh, art direction so you know you uh, you uh, put together an art bible you establish a style and the quality bar and you make sure that everybody sticks to it um right. it's, so uh, like a priest if you're if you're at the bible well in a smaller company it's more like a management role i always want to go to the states and uh, where an art director is basically just a lead concept artist and so you can just sit and paint and draw all day long. But I'm assuming that that has its own pressures. And it is easy to get yeah. burnt out. You're drawing goblins every damn day. When I first worked at SSG, I was working on uh, trading cards for them. And uh, uh, I was 25. And I thought to myself, well, this is me set for the rest of my life. Never have to do anything else. I'll just sit and draw pictures of goblins and dragons. Uh, and then four and a half years later, I was like, if I have to draw one more picture of a <laughs> goblin, I swear to God, there's going to be a shotgun rampage. <laughs> um, so it is possible to get burnt out. Um, but yeah, that's that's why every now and again, if I've got time, I'll crack out a comic because I like to write. Um, I really enjoy the writing process. And um, uh, I think being able to do the artwork is what gets my writing into the comic book. Mm. Can you see that question um, on the screen, Alistair? Are, are you featured in the Art of Spiral book, Alistair? I strongly doubt it. <laughs> um, when when we did Spiral, it was for Spiral Dawn of the Dragon. They were giving a whole new look to a lot of the, the creatures. They were all elementals, and so some of them were um, composed out of... They, were, uh, they would say, this is an orc, but, and it would have an orc-like shape, but it would have leaves instead of hair and roots and tendrils instead of fingers and so on and so forth. And it was all very complex. And uh, the Nintendo DS, um, not the most powerful 3D processor, 
on the planet. So uh, all of those concepts had to be redone so that uh, we could produce models that fit the style of the franchise, but Fine. would fit into um, uh, the Nintendo DS. So uh, a lot of that stuff is on my uh, 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 Instagram account. If you scroll a ways down. Oh, I was talking which, at the uh, other which I assume isn't under your name. It'd be under like some sort of pseudonym. Because uh, no, you don't want to. Uh, Alistair Lockhart art. Well, uh, what? I, I don't think you use your real name. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm, Separate. I'm, not, I'm not popular enough to get dog piled. Um, oh, <laughs> come back to no. us. <laughs> well, they talk now. This is a new element to quicks. <laughs> um, I also had a radio show for about five years. Um, there, was a, there was a show about movies, and uh, and I would regularly say things every week that should have gotten me thrown off air. But uh, we discovered uh, after doing the show for about four or five years, it was almost no one listening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why, you know, there was never any emails. There was never any complaints um, about stuff that I was saying, uh, you know. Anything that should have gotten me cancelled for life. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it, it came, none of it ever came to anything. So uh, I think there's a freedom in that. Um, if, if you're a major star and you say one, if you just give out one unsolicited opinion about something that everybody's a bit touchy about, then uh, yeah. That can just have your whole career collapsing in around your ears. It's funny just um, saying you had a radio show, no one was listening. I had a radio show um, when I was about 19 or 20 um, with two friends, and we were on a public, uh, like a local sort of radio station. Um, and we suspected that no one was listening. So we <laughs> offered um, free Living End uh, plectrums, a uh, plectrum signed by the Living End, the band. Yeah. Um, all you had to do was ring up and answer one simple question. So no one rang up. So then the next week we um we said we had a gu guitar signed by the members of Blink One Eight Two. We didn't. <laughs> but we were just like, well, this is like people will ring for this. Uh, and my mum rang and tried to win it for my brother. <laughs> and I was like, mum, <laughs> this was a this was a test to see if anyone was listening. And she's like, well, yeah, I was listening. And I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> that's not you know. <laughs> So anyway. Well, that's one you had on me. My mother never listened to the show. <laughs> you see, you're too rude, Colin. You're always being rude. Well, that was but the no, first uh, my test. Your name's Alistair. <laughs> yes. Uh, my test was to tell a very off-color joke, which I won't repeat here. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was... Uh, As people... <laughs> I'm confused Sorry, by that... the Colin. Are you, is your birth name Colin? Uh, yes. Um, my name is Colin Alistair Lockhart. Uh, hey, where, now they they find that? Now where did you find that photo? <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't realize you actually were using a pseudonym this whole time, and I've just connected you to your real self, and it's all yeah. over. He knew what he yeah, was that comes about. in. A, that comes in handy every now and again. No, uh, I I started. Um, I was so I was Colin until I left high school. And then when I got to uni, um, does anybody remember who's old enough to remember the comedy company? Yeah, yeah. I know oh, yeah I'm old enough. Oh, that's like um, Con the Fruiter and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So they had a character oh, called Colin Carpenter. Colin Carpenter. Colin. Oh, yeah, Colin Carpenter. Yeah. And uh, and the gag was that Colin wasn't very bright. Is it? And so. So for so for years, people would say, "Oh, Colm, Colm Katner, Colm Katner, hey, hey, Colm Katner, hey, 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 Colm, Colm, Colm," and he'd follow me down the street. Colm, Colm, Colm Katner. Mm -hmm. So I thought this needs to change. So when I got to uni, somebody it was like an orientation day, and somebody gave me a little name badge with my name on it, and I said, "Could I borrow your pen?" And I just took the the card out and wrote Alistair on it and put it back in, and that was all it took. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's funny, I have I. 
not to one up your stories every time or one down them. <laughs> so oh, please do. I got a similar. So a guy thought, in high school thought it would be funny. Um, the hottest girl in our class was standing near the door, and he went up to the board, and her name was Sarah, and he wrote, "Sarah loves Robert." And like, and I was standing, and the idea was she'd turn around, see Sarah loves Robert, and go, "Oh no, I don't." Um, but I was standing close enough that I just rubbed out the R and the O. And so she comes in and she said, Sarah loves Bert. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, my name didn't change. It didn't stick around. But... Thinking on your toes. I like it. You want Bert? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, it might, quick. It might have worked out really well. She was like, oh, I've always felt this way about you two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah um, bro. Quick, do it. So we've um, we've learned a lot tonight, and I intend to learn a bit more. But I think maybe we should just take a moment to digest <laughs> what we've heard so far. Do you think? What are you yeah, sorry? A little, uh, reflection time. A yeah. bit, do you want to do you want to drive? Because I actually don't know the buttons. <laughs> but... I think we'll keep it simple with a little bit of uh, night driving music while we focus on what Dave dies up to. <laughs> so everybody at home, just just take a second. <laughs> Think about what you've heard tonight. All right. Just keep uh, going. Keep moving. I'm just bloody playing around here, puddling in paint. I thought I'd do something a bit different tonight. Maybe just take a sip of your drink and <laughs> watch as an artist brushes. Welcome to ABC's Smooth Listening. <laughs> and we've had a letter from Alistair. In Sydney, <laughs> Alistair says, Spedsy, I can't stop thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a letter. There's a letter here from Spedsy. Oh, Colin. <laughs> Colin, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Colin? Colin, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Colin. <laughs> I've got a picture of Colin here, actually. He might just overtake our friend Dave. There he is. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Mellow, yeah, yeah. So, so, talk talk about that amulet, um, Dave. There's no amulet on the uh reference drawing, is there? You've... I don't know, I just stuck it there. I, I, I was gonna <laughs> ask a few questions about the character, like, uh, does he have a weapon? Because in the, the um, no, nope. uh, the... I think nudity is his weapon. <laughs> so he had a hey, big woolly, woolly jacket meant, on. You're you meant to talk like this. <laughs> Has he got a white beard? Is that right? That's yeah. right. All right, got that bit right. So no amulet. I can go over that. No, uh, don't worry about the amulet. You can add that if you like. There's no Holds cannon his, involved here. He may have had one when he first came to the top of the mountain. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> You probably had a shirt as well. I do apologize for this. There's, there's a great deal of, there's a great many naked men in my work. I don't know if there's, I don't know if I'm trying to explore something there. That, um... Um, a story of a young man exploring his sexuality and discovering that it is utterly vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's me. I was going to say, what, what was that? All right. Hey, uh, Nathan, back to the show. Nathan, listen. Tell us about your yeah. work, Nathan. I know you're a big fan of drawing uh, muscular men. Having read some of your muscular men, oh, well, does that show up on the screen? No, it doesn't. We can bring it up. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Oh, no, right. so yeah. okay. holy moly, that's great. That's a great. You know what? I don't, it, it looks a little bit like Hayao Miyazaki has gone feral. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thick eyebrows, I think, but it looks like <laughs> that's a compliment. I was, like I was channeling um, John Romita Jr. with the face a little bit, but yeah, I'm not sure that's, that's terrific. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, hey, no Nathan, problem, Nathan, being your first time on the show, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, look, I've only just kind of started illustrating comics myself in the last couple of years. Like, it was always you know my dream job as a kid. Um, and funnily enough, what you were saying before, Alistair, I had the opposite job, the opposite thing happened where I had parents who were very encouraging of me doing art as a career and I never actually followed it until recently. <laughs> um, so I've, I've um, released a couple of books in the last couple of years. Uh, Red Back Armageddon is my own self-published work, if people have heard of that. Um, 
Yeah, people are familiar with the uh, cartoonist Kayfabe channel, uh, Ed Biscor and Jim Rugg in yeah. the States. Um, I've worked on a book uh, last couple of years during the pandemic, uh, Image Grand Design. Hey. Oh, there we go. There's my book right there. Oh, nice work. Yeah, okay. yeah people have it. <laughs> Actually, I bought that off you in Adelaide. That's one of the original ones too. Yes. With the spelling mistake yeah. on the inside of the table. <laughs> oh, I love that X rental. It's meant to be a video um, VHS cover. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of inspired by the VHS era, um, you know, Ozploitation flicks, uh, Mad Max, Army of Darkness, all those kind of movies that I grew up with. I got the, the one that's it's about magazine size, oversized, big one, a bit like, yeah, that oh, one. Oh, look at that. Nice. That's sick. That's wicked. Well, wicked my brother was very into it. meatloaf and Black Sabbath when I was a kid, so that's definitely <laughs> following on very strongly in that day. The influence shows. <laughs> yeah. Where can people really find your books? Then? Fantastic. So um, this particular work I was doing um, a couple of years ago, I came across a uh, uh, work by uh, an artist. Uh, oh, what's my name? Sure. Um, Alexis oh. Zero, people are familiar with that name. What's his what name? was it, sorry? Uh, Alexis Zero uh, did a book called Space Riders last yeah, right. year. Not sure. On people he familiar. Or what? He's got an art style that kind of um, uh, I was really inspired by to actually start working myself. Where is he from, mate? I think he's Venezuela. I'm not. I'm not too sure, to be honest. All oh, right. Is he out of America so somewhere? What were you doing? Were you doing any illustrating otherwise before comics? Um, no, previously I um, attended art school and things like that when I was younger. I was straight out of high school, went to University of Ballarat, um, studied art there. And for a few years afterwards, I was kind of doing the, the usual thing, like participating in group exhibitions and things like that. Um, but I ended up getting into mental health work uh, in my mid 20s, and that ended up becoming a really strong kind of passion of mine, which kind of took up pretty much all my time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it was only uh, about 2017 I needed a break from that and got out of it and uh, found with uh, the extra, extra time on my hands, I had a, a bit of time to start drawing again. So I yeah. uh, started working, um, had a couple of exhibitions, um, one here in Adelaide in 2019. Um, yeah. I held part of the opening of the Feast Festival here, which was pretty cool. Um, and then just took the plunge and started drawing some comics from there. So. I think it was uh, Paper Cuts Festival here in Adelaide in 2019. I actually had no idea there was a, a, a comics community here in this town. So I heard that was on, went along and took uh, some black and white printouts of the first comic that I drew and kind of handed them out as business cards, which yeah. was pretty cracking, but, uh, you know, paid off. <laughs> I got to know a few people, which has been really great. Cool. That's oh, awesome, man. Good, that's anyway. awesome. Uh, and so, so where did you guys meet, you and Nick, um, at a convention? Uh, yeah, I think we tabled to get, get tied together. Um, we were like opposite tables, like we were just looking at each other yeah. all day, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were both newbies, so, you know, we were kind of reassuring mm. each other. <laughs> yeah, we tabled yeah, together again recently um, at the Pipe Cuts this, year, this last year, just gone. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. It was a good crowd here in Adelaide, I will say. Well, I met you at the um, uh, Adelaide Comic and Toy Fair. That's where I, I met you. Yep. That was about two years ago, I think. Not last year, the year before. Something like I that. I remember last year. Well, maybe it was because it's the beginning of the year pretty much. Not the October one. The um, Yeah, it would have been almost the a year. Early one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The last couple of years have been a bit of a blur as far as events go. I mean. Mm. It's been much inside, but yeah. It has. I've missed it. Oh, Nick. Dave, roughly how many books do you walk away with um, after a convention? As in, you seem to buy everybody's books. <laughs> do you, <laughs> do you walk away with a huge stack or or do you pick and choose? Or uh, what's the... Yeah, well, I usually, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I buy everyone's, mate. So everyone should be buying mine. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, Dave. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> no, well, I pick up a few, especially um, new ones and stuff like that. That I, you know, go up and meet new people and say good day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dave's a great uh, supporter. 
Um, DK, we haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Um, I've been working on Volume 4, my comic series. Oh, good um, stuff. Yeah, so just been working four. on that, really. <laughs> yeah. Number four already. The series, what's yes, the name? Yes, four. Billy Bones and the Apocalypse with Bob the Dog. Um, <laughs> I'll show you. Oops. This is Volume 1. Yep. Oh, awesome. That's so cool. Volume two. Look at a backdrop there. Yeah. Nice. All right. Oh, yeah, that sick. Well, I've got the first one. I haven't got the second, number two and three. I'm beating Dave for once. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that your art behind you, Dana, the big um, skeletons playing guitar? Um. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> You do a lot of. Um, um, you do um, that for customers, like you get um, commissions to do their pets and that, don't you, Dana? Yeah, I do um, custom caricatures and pet portraits as mm -hmm. well. Um, Where can yeah. people find you if they wanted to get one of those? Oh God, the camera's broken. Uh, do you kind of I mean, Al Alistair could find you Oops. just by looking at the screen, but. For people yeah, who um, <laughs> want to find you, right like, Alice already Sorry. knows. Decutterstudios.com. Oh, okay. Decut. Awesome. Oh, nice. Cool. Wicked. I've got a little picture of uh, me and Nathan at the last uh, Paper Cuts Festival. <laughs> 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 Are you pestering him, were you? Yeah, sure. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> was it everything you hoped, Nathan? Or? Did, he, did he run that line he by your career will be made when you get on comics? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> He's always using that line everywhere. He could try it on me. Yeah. That's what he told me, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Alistair, there's a question for you. Um, someone's asked, what are you working on at the moment? Um, well, uh, I've got a regular gig doing art. Uh, as I said, I'm working with Steve Faulkner at Infinite Plus Two. Um, I do art for uh, Gems of War, which is uh, um, it's a gem matching game, but with every possible fantasy BC you could possibly name, and even a few more. Um, so yeah, I do characters and uh, and artworks for that. Uh, I'm also doing occasional work for Puzzle Quest Three, and uh, and I've got some storyboarding work uh, with people that I can't name. On a project that I can't talk about. Ooh. Ah, yes, of course. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I haven't been teaching for a while uh, because uh, I got to say, I really and I love teaching. I fell into it by accident and found this is, you know, teaching people how to design games is far better than actually designing games. <laughs> um, yeah, right. uh, it's genuinely the best job I ever had. However, there is a big difference between loving what you do and loving the people that you work for. Uh, okay. And we'll say no more than that. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, if you want to, if you want to come work for Comex and do a Thursday night show where you uh, teach all us uh, plebs <laughs> how to do this stuff, just oh, say the very word. expensive. Yeah, no, I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, have you love, you love working with us. Oh, yeah, I got money to burn. I got five hundred dollars coming in, man. <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea no, how much money we, we get from these Kickstarters. Like, it's okay. just <laughs> yeah. no. presents. Documents. I'm happy to sit in and waste out and waste oxygen as much as you like. <laughs> I'll never stop if given long enough to talk. <laughs> um, it's uh, I think it's an ADHD thing. Um, when I talk, I like people to shut up and listen. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so lecturing is the perfect job for me. I, I, I like when you say immortal with your Scottish accent. Does anyone else perk up a little bit? And he, I think immortal. Of Is it just me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is, that, you, yeah. Is that a bit of a Highlander Sean Connery thing? With the... mm -hmm. yeah. 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 One more time, Alistair. Come on. Every Scotsman can do Sean Connery. It's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even an Australian can do him as well. Uh, yes. No, I not, found the cure to the plague of the 20th century and then I fucking washed it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, matter of fact, I don't like that. 
<laughs> I like Alistair's one better. <laughs> so you've been I, like, I always get that people say, "Oh, say a thousand pounds." Oh, okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> say immortal. Say immortal for us. It's uh... <laughs> like it. Hey, yes. Sizzle. How about we have a look at some art? Mm -hmm. yeah, Should we do that? Look at some art. Yeah, we've got some have been sent in. We'll go through them first, and then we'll pick on the people here. So we have Nick May sent one in. He oh. was. I'll bring it up twice oh. so everyone sees it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. People, effective one. <laughs> May. Nick May oh, looks fucking good. Yeah. He is yeah. awesome. <laughs> and next up, we got one from Robbie Donaldson. Woo. Oh, I love Robbie's stuff. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. That's, That's really good. good. That's yeah, sick. Really good. Excellent. Fantastic. Uh, at Saddle We should put together a book of these. Hell yeah. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And, What's he um, got? Whip marks all over him, has he? Scars. 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 He's covered in scars. All oh, right. Battle scars, right. Yeah, about this a battle scar. time. <laughs> whip scars. Could be whip scars. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, just a, a quick note to the young aspiring artists out there. If you're designing a, a character who has uh, full body scars or full, especially full body tattoos, uh, do be aware you're going to be drawing that character again and again and again and again and yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it looks cool at first, but then it just gets real old. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's not just, uh, I have to struggle this with like um, my work as well, because I do like short animation sometimes and like people design the craziest t shirts stuff. Like, oh, can you make sure that the character's like, it's cost you, it's going to cost you money and time? Are you sure you want it? <laughs> Because yeah. like I, I, I charge for it uh, because it's like honestly like because you also have to pay attention to it because like especially like we on a show we worked for, on uh, before um, the character had like a little fish on his uh, shirt and we had to spend time making sure that the fish is facing the right direction. It's just a mm -hmm. lot of these to think uh, about their detail when designing a character. So. Uh, very well pointed out there, Alistair. Like, not even as a joke. It's like a serious thing for younger artists. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. The, who's the name of the artist who did Animalia? I should know this. Oh, a very popular um, book, that one. Very popular children's book. Um, mm. and oh, oh, Graham Bass. Yeah, I know the one. That, um... Graham Bass. So I met yeah. Graham. Um, he was doing a film, a short film with some friends of mine in Melbourne. Um, and uh, And I said... Do you ever get sick of that detail? And he said, I cursed myself. <laughs> My entire career, I have cursed myself of having to put that level of detail in pretty much everything that I do. Mm. So, yeah, be careful. Yeah, just make it, make it a square with circles for eyes. That's it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> square head with circles for eyes. Done. The yeah. ultimate. No, but I mean, it's just uh, being like the other thing is also what people don't realize like how much it helps if your character design is symmetrical. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes like a, like in sometimes you need to flip it, and if you just flip it, it's symmetrical. You just flip it. That's it. Um, mm. it just for fix-up yeah. purposes as well. Yes, I have a rule for games right. characters, which is no capes. Okay. <laughs> capes right. bugger up everything. Um, what, what? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, if if it's a two D game, then you're gonna uh, you're um, if you've got a character that moves up and down and leftwards, left and uh, and forwards in space, but they have a two D animated cape. Like you know, a pose mm -hmm. for jumping forward and backward might be identical, but if you've got a cape, it's gonna react. Oh, yeah. Like a cape would in those circumstances. So you're yeah. multiplying the number of animations that you have to do for each pose by eight. And if you're doing it in 3D, then you've got cloth physics, and that causes you a whole bunch of headaches as well. Um, yeah. I believe that the joke in the Pixar, in, in The Incredibles, actually came out of the production process where, yeah. you know, the, the chief technical officer said, please, no capes. All right. Cloth physics are a bastard from hell and if we don't have to do cloth physics for every single character then that will really save us so that was where that gag for like <laughs> no kicks came from <laughs> that's that's why m bison in street fighter 2 m bison takes his cape off at the start of the fight oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell, yeah so hell yeah so, and it's and in every <laughs> games class and in, in every games class there's always some kid who wants 
to do a game that involves uh, a six-foot vampire with long flowing hair and a great big <laughs> red overcoat and uh, an impractically large sword. And you, you just have to tell them, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, get to him gently, mate. So, <laughs> that's why it's Super Mario Brothers. So, Alistair yeah. and Alex, really, if you were pitching a cartoon, would you say that, like, if you could see straight away that the design would be kind of cheap to to animate, that that would be a selling point, or? Um, if you're designing a character, you really I see where this you really need Sorry, to know. No, I wasn't trying to make it about. I mean, I wasn't okay, trying to make it about the devil's toilet. This when you draw a budgie, question. you don't have to draw hands. You just draw like big flat, flat just a things. Face and a, and a toilet, yeah. mm, mm. If if you're pitching, um, if you're designing a character for anything, you need to know what it's for. Is it a 2D game, a 3D game, a platform, or a shooter? Um, what medium are you working in? Uh, the best example I can think of is I used to have an introduction to media course where I would make um, people make design a character and then build it in Play-Doh. And they would make, you know, a body and two arms and two legs and then a head and then they would start working on the face and they would go, oh, this is getting a bit fiddly. And then they would try and make fingers and realize that they'd made a mistake. Is that it, you know you cannot have a character with articulated fingers in Play-Doh unless said character is at least two feet tall and has a skeleton and so on. You you cannot make any material do what it absolutely cannot do. Yeah. Um, and that's including you know if you've ever plastered a wall, it's it's like any other paint. Um, it, it has its own personality, and wall plaster is has the personality of unionized labor. It does one thing and one thing only. It'll go where it's put and it'll stay there happily. But you can't move it once it's there and you can't, you know, modify what it's doing in any way. You either put it on or dig it out, but you don't do anything else with it. And uh, so if you design a character that has long flowing hair and a big red great coat with a scarf that flows all over the place, that's not going to be a 2D platformer on the Game Boy ever. Mm -hmm so um and and it's really and the best the best animations are ones that actually uh, use the limitations of the material to their advantage um like uh, remember the red and the blue it used uh, to be yeah. on tv a long time ago best to say to be a red yeah a red plasticine yeah, yeah, character yeah. and a blue plasticine oh, character that was good. and it was it's always the same time. the red guy would be he'd be enjoying his day and then the little blue one would come in and bugger up his day yeah, and and the character was amorphous, and if he needed an arm to express an, uh, uh, I think uh, an emotion of some kind, that. Rob, just to yeah. your, for selling stuff, um, what you need yeah. to do is you need to be a salesman first, and all the stuff that we're talking about is just about it's basically going to be a production cost. So you, you, the thing is that when you have all these details, it's a cost. So it said, so, so if somebody's going to say, hey, I'll, I want my wavy hair, my 2D game, it's going to be a nightmare to work with uh, there's, because it's going to be a nightmare for logistics of all the mathematics and all this other stuff and also the man hours and all these other stuff that's going to add to it. Um, but um, you basically, you know, like when you are pitching your thing, um, all that technicality stuff, because like, I've been to a bunch of pitches as well, lost some, won stuff, won some, mm -hmm. and all these technicalities, most people don't care. They want to know what's, um, you know, who you appeal, what your audience is, um, what your background is, and usually they'll change. Like on the TV show we worked on, um, was had very little to do with the actual original comic that we adapted, and I wanted it to be, and I was a director on the show, and I wanted it, and the investors were like, no. Mm. Maybe, <laughs> and so what you pitch and what the end product is is not going to be the same thing. So I wouldn't be too worried about it when you're at that early stage. Just make sure that you are very presentable, um, and then your deck is fun, and you know you know who you're pitching to. You got to know who you're, who's buying, whose money you're asking for, and if you know them and you got a good rapport with them, then you're good. But if you're if you don't have a good rapport, no matter how good your product is, if they don't like you, <laughs> then, yeah. uh, 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and then, that, um, that, um, that stuff uh, that um, I'll, I'll okay. be bringing up before, just your budget. It's just basically how it's going to affect your budget and how you're going to make it easier. So, for instance, like mm. a symmetrical character, what that's going to help you with is going to help you with when you mold, when you, uh, cause like when you build like a, a, a PVC toy and then doing the molding for a, a symmetrical thing is going to make it easier for them because they need to do how mm. when you're doing animation animation is not hand drawn anymore the way i like to do it it's all done in toon boom they put together a rig and all these other stuff so like even rick and morty is not hand drawn it's puppets and yeah uh, so when they create a puppet and you've got a symmetrical character you just need the library only needs to be five sides instead of eight so these are the kind of stuff and, and it all adds up your production stuff especially when you're working yeah. on like I work on low budget stuff. So on low budget shows, you need to think all of that in a head, in advance. So your show doesn't look as cheap as it is. Mm -hmm. But these are stuff you think about once you got the budget, when you got the, before you got the budget, before you sold your stuff, you do what you need to do to sell it. And it's got to go, it's got to morph anyway from that pitch. Yeah. So, um, this okay. is a good tease for sure. next week. Next week's drink and draw. Um, our guest is actually Alex. Uh, oh, <laughs> um, so I would love to. So just I'll just bring his cover up again. Um, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> prepare yourself, Alex, because this episode has been awesome, and you've got an equally uh, uh, you know deep uh, catalog of knowledge to pull from. So let's get mm. serious. Let's, uh, well, let's discuss this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I shaved so the, as well. Uh, because I got inspired by Shane. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Papa Alex. So just it's just to go back it's briefly, it's just yeah, to go back briefly to the examples. Just yeah. to go back briefly to the examples I was discussing right. before. If you look up Studio Misseri, I M I W S E R I, on YouTube, you'll see. It's uh, it's the sort of stuff where one guy with a lockdown camera and a white background and two blobs of plasticine can do the whole thing by himself. Or there's a wow. show called Qua Qua, which is for very young children. Yeah, those um, ducks. Which does some <laughs> fantastically <laughs> does some amazing animation with just some coloured construction paper. Yeah. And uh, and another one called A I E O U, which is just using corks and forks in a, in a tray of sand. <laughs> It's wow. amazing. It's it's simple, beautiful magic, and it's the kind of thing that, um, that animation ones? should be. It's like, sorry to interrupt. But yeah. Are they like European ones, and they they don't have any voices? They do noises so they can sell it to the whole yeah. Europe. Yeah. 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 Like, like finger, so it's, fingers. So it's fingers. Yeah. Cool. It's really the low end of your production values, kind of a thing, um, and. Uh, you know what Alex is talking about is when you have a crew, and I do agree with him about being the director. Just because it says that um, above your name, it doesn't mean that you're in charge. Uh, people of the well, money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan May is out there. Dan May um, has been getting into stop motion uh, animation. So, but he's been oh, doing cool. it with action figures. So now I'm just thinking. And I've been lucky enough to do some silly voices on some of it. So I'm like, let's get some <laughs> let's the same balls going and some quack, quack. Let's get this. <laughs> uh, should we see some more arts here? We've got a few others uh, sitting there banked. Yep. I'm just in the middle of oh, I'm sorry. downloading one. So if you could show one, that'd be great. So, uh, we've got one from Davo77, a.k.a. Tony Davidson. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good one. That's Davo. cool. Good. There you go. Um, you can oh, tell okay. we all worked from the uh, same reference because here's my one. <laughs> but, yeah. Standing <laughs> on a rock. <laughs> yes. So yeah, if you've it. just tuned in, it's Naked Men. Yeah. Oh, today. Just to show fun. another one in a similar pose, we've got DKs. Woo! Oh, Holy yes. moly. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see it. Oh. Oh, hang on, I'll put it up twice. There you go. There, oh, yeah, that's it. Right? Yeah, that's awesome. Work. I like it's got that. Some that's Game cool. of Thrones vibes for me. Really cool. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like a White Walker type <laughs> dude. Yeah. Um, have we, Ed, have Ed, we seen something from you? Not yet. 
Yeah. Let's uh, let's do. It. Whoa. Oh, hang on, hang oh. on. Let me boost that one up. And then put it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, up, he's in the fight and pose. He's in there yeah. ready. Yeah. In, in my defense, I've been drinking all day and I draw fast, so this is the best I could do. So. <laughs> you're doing a good job, mate. <laughs> You've had a more fun day than I. <laughs> well, I was back there. Good one, Ed. Um, so we've seen everybody's, right? So we'll nice. just zoom into, we'll zoom into um, Dave's one last time. Oh, Have yes, we seen please. Alex's? Yeah. Well, Alex is coming up next. Well done, Dave. That's, That's cool, awesome, Dave. Dave. Cool. I just want to awesome. do something a bit I love different. I love the, the change of medium. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Dave was my reference for the colors. So thanks, Dave. How did you do that in an hour? That's insane. That's so mm. that is. Mm. Uh, and the good thing, Alistair, if you sweet talk Dave, he might even send it to you. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Something to light your fire maybe, with, mate. Maybe if I talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost, we, lost, um, we lost. We lost Nathan, so I didn't get yeah, to. Uh, oh, good lord! Oh, yeah. Give, give him this. Give him the spiel. But um, a bit unfunny. for those who are new to the show, we uh, what we'd like to do. Hey, Dan. Let's get some plasticine bowls going. Um, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we like to find out who is the hottest person in Australian comics. Oh, yeah. Um, the carryover champ last week was, I think, Dave Dye and... Was it? Someone else. I, I believe so, Dave. I can't, I can't no, remember. No, as me. As me and every, week, and every week, it's someone different. Yeah. This is an unfair contest, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let us find out via Alex ready, Major's ready? amazingness. Ready? Click it. Let's do it. Ooh. It's me. Oh, it's me. Oh. Okay. Hey! Oh, hey. Oh, it's Alistair. 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 Mate. I'm really going to BK for a second. <laughs> uh, BK got me out. Sorry. <laughs> this is just such a surprise. It starts off with me. Uh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> That one may just wait, Alex. The the pressure on that one. Yeah, that, was good. <laughs> that is fantastic. That's like how he uh, gets the answer from his own crotch. He's like, oh. <laughs> 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 uh, the answer to all life's mysteries. Right Alex, here. What are all the what are all the scars on him? Do we find out that uh, in the story? Is it? Uh, it's is he's. It so the the idea is that he's been up there for a while and uh you know uh, he enjoys the quiet but every now and again he has to put up with challengers um and he's been at it a while <laughs> so long in fact that uh he he doesn't even remember why he's there at all, all right. so uh yeah i've got that story mate what it's in a anthology isn't it yeah it's uh it, it originally appeared in decay a few years ago right Man, right, the but, yeah, that's where I but read it. Yeah, I updated it a little. Um, mm -hmm. it makes more sense now, and it has two more pages. Ah, yeah. so, Dave, so, if you want the director's cut, mate, yeah, yes. so, <laughs> presents.comics.studio. There's an unnecessary CGI Jabba, um, <laughs> it, in it, your character uh, awkwardly steps over its tail. Yeah, 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 it was a scene that needed to be there. Yeah, does nobody shoot first or? <laughs> well, that's fixed too. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. I just well, want maybe... to get one thing in because when we were going through the covers before, we were missing Zach's. Now, yes. We don't have a completed version of Zach's oh, cover, yeah. but I just got the version of him. So. Ooh. Oh, nice. Nice. oh, nice, Zach. I've done more since I've seen that it. Is Zach's cover for two presents. That's sick. Nice work, Zach. That is really cool. Good stuff, Zach. Yeah, that's really actually I like good. it. Zach's really captured every other artist uh, style as well, a little mm. bit. Mm. Mm. That's really cool. Zach is really oh. amazing at drawing Chaloni. It's it's really <laughs> really cool. He does a pretty so good job. Right? No, that's fine. I just thought um, maybe we should um, head into the. Uh, I want to know more about the dog. Dave. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, 
Hey, Nathan, uh, um, comment your uh, um, Instagram handle or uh, your website so people know yeah, where to yeah, be. Both. We can put it up. Uh, and in the meantime, let us do this. Dana, you need to say. This poor person is looking through the newspaper for info on what projects our artists have been working on. And this lost individual is using a map to find where she can follow her artists on social media and buy their books. How about we save them the trouble and just tell them? We call this next segment Shameless Self-Promotion. Take us away, Susan. Mine's simple this week. Well, for the next four weeks, it'll be quite simple. It is this link, presents.comex.studio. That's where you get Presents 3, Presents New R3. Um, and some other goodies, depending on what uh, package you get. One of the packages is actually to appear on this show. There's three of them. One is already gone. So there's Ooh. two left. Cool. So, um, so, yeah, jump in and... And I'll draw you. And, yeah, we will draw you or a character. Several hundred times. Or mm. your, your favorite person, whatever. Um, and you get and so to be the artists. Yeah, they'll be in as the guest, and then we draw they'll whatever they wanted the to draw. Yeah, yeah or whatever you want us to draw. Nice. There's three spots and one's been taken. So that's right. Yes, yeah, so if if you like the cut of our jibs on this silly show, come be a part of it. It'd be awesome. <laughs> It'd be awesome to have you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will just basically double up on what Sizzle is saying. Um, that presents.comex.studio. I have a story called Ring Around the Rosie in uh, Presents Noir with. Lee Chalker and Ryan Vella, two um, enigmas, creative enigmas, um, who teamed up. We teamed up together to tell this uh, gruesome little tale. Um, it's kind of a one and done, yet uh, a chapter comes in um, in a later issue as well. Uh, and then in Presents number three, I have the last chapter of Frederick Cialoni's Adventures with a uh, cameo by a square-headed dude with circle eyes. Badoosh! <laughs> and just a plug for comics itself um, and this show and our Discord that we play around on. Um, we are a gang, but we're not an exclusive gang. Everybody is welcome. The only rule is don't be a dick. Um, and please Oh, join I'm so us. sorry. <laughs> uh, please don't I've hesitate to reach out well. uh, to basically anyone here um, and we will point you in the right direction to uh, join us and we like to create together chat together, hang out, give each other advice uh, appear on this show all that sort of good stuff um, so don't be shy <laughs> alright, quick Nick uh, I recommend you all get on the uh, the uh, no Noir Presents because Detective Budgie appears there, so you can check out eight pages of my work. Um, and I'll just do a little plug for Nathan, who can't make it. Nice. So I've, got, I've got both of Nathan's comic books. They are excellent. They are Australian. They're awesome. Yes. You can find them at notadamsteve.com. Notadamsteve.com. And, um, yeah, I've been friends with Nathan for a while, and I'm still friends with him because I really like his work. And that's the first time the C word appeared on the show. Nice work. Yes. Um, <laughs> quick, can you just tell me on the cover of that comic, it's got two price tags. Tell me they say Space Age, do they? What does it say? This one says X Rental. Okay. And hey. Actually, this is a video VHS cover. And the, the other book has some little yes. yellow price tags. Sale oh, price. sale price. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Space Age was board. like a it's Space Age was like a really old comic shop, um, and they used to put their price tags on the covers of books. Oh, and so yeah. if you like go hunting for back issues, you'll often find a Space Age sticker on one or two of them. But that's besides the point. Alex Major. <laughs> All right. I um, just want to remind everybody uh, to subscribe to the channel. Oh, yep. Thank and you. And also. Uh, click the bell so you're reminded every time there's some new episodes of because there's, it's not just drink and draw it's also a uh, Saturday oh, show and a Saturday show called CCTX which I only got reminded last time was a super good interview with uh, Duncan and yeah, um, Duncan I only know about it YouTube was like you follow this you need to know and 
I got on it. So I recommend everybody else to explore the comics universe. Who's on next week, Jane? Who's in, who's a, who's the guest in next week? <laughs> We'll get to that later. Don't worry. There's other stuff to plug. There's also, I'm also part of the... Off the top of my head, I don't know. Me. <laughs> oh, you, is oh, it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're... Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Well, that's great, Nick. That's awesome. I'm going <laughs> to... You uh, are. I'm going to watch it, and then I'm going to tell all my friends about it, too. All three of them. <laughs> The two of them are my cats. Anyways, um, so um, also I'm also part of the comics books. Um, I got the noir story coming out now. Uh, that's also so so. Put money at it, um, and also you're supporting other people, not just me. So if you don't like me, that's okay. There's other people you might like. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> likes you. Uh, no, don't make me blush. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then um, also, um, I'm also going to plug Vamoose 3 because I'm in it and somebody else forgot about plugging it. So Vamoose 3 is <laughs> coming out and um, Nick's in it. Um, not quick Nick, slow Nick. Um, <laughs> the, the one that shaved his beard. So I can't even call him bearded Nick anymore. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then also, I've got uh, I'm, through my next. Uh, um, comic that i'm going to put up on webtoons so i'm going to be more regular on that so just look at sloppy oh. tune on webtoons um it's a lot it's of old to hear that you're, you're sloppy but you're um going to be more regular so you must be eating more fiber or whatever so. yeah. <laughs> and then um, also on my socials i'm sloppy bunny tunes on my other socials on tiktok and um and the instagrams and that next um i think it's going to be oh yeah by the way I quickly plug another comic guy i did buy I, just we are plugging books dark nebula is out you can buy you can if you're in sydney go to king's comics they have it um you won't find it so just tell the lady i want comics. dark nebula so can i can i just tell you a weird little factoid about that yeah. book <laughs> if you have a look on the cover just like i should get a writing credit because there's two covers and they they both say um this scene doesn't appear in the book and i said put on one of them the word either see at the end it says this image this scene does yeah, not appear in the book yeah. either just uh, saying it's yeah. some of my well all rob all just, rob you know you if you, right. if you want to uh have your comic get a, an extra word on the cover just go out <laughs> hey look at that, uh, look at that either. Either. either I wasn't into the brackets. I didn't ask for brackets. That was their uh, choice. <laughs> they did that on their own. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. There you Yikes. go. Anyway, uh, so, so um, yeah, so everybody knows how to find me and all my stuff. So now it's up to Deadly Dave. I just so want to I, point out Dark Nebula is also available there. Come oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just it the other day. And also, I Pat, if you're in Sydney, you owe me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered it the other day, didn't I, Sis? Uh, I don't have that good a memory. I don't remember. Well, I bloody no. did, all right? I packed the boxes <laughs> and I sent them. That's all I know. All right, mate. Um, my stuff is available in the comic shop. My name's Dave Dye. Yeah, I've got stuff in the comic shop. I've got stuff available on Owner Indie. I do have a Facebook, <laughs> but I don't really go there too often. Um, these days, I'm sort of steered away from a little bit. I do have Instagram, but I don't go. I go there even less. So dynamite fifty nine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, the last few weeks I've been just sort of talking about some comics that I've got to plug. So I just thought some self um, plugging here. We've got Cut Down, <laughs> which was written by Roger Stitson and illustrated. This was actually written as a a film play, an entry into a a film festival, uh, never got made into a film. Roger was looking for someone to illustrate it for him. He saw my work in Amazing Tales number one and contacted me. I read the story and I said, gee, that's a bloody good story. I don't understand why you can't find anyone to um, illustrate it. So yeah, I'll illustrate that. It's a ripper. Wow. So um, I went ahead and did it. So it's a noir sort of Hitchcock type thing, I reckon. Um, a lot of fun, really good story, and um, I enjoyed illustrating it and um, being part of it. That's available in the comic shop. So awesome. that's all from me. Um, I think Alex and Spedgy and Quick 
and Sizzle have plugged everything possible with Comex. I don't <laughs> want to go over all that again. So okay. I'll pass out to the, the wing, to Ed. Ed, oh, uh, oh, Ed. And his twin brother, or who's that? Well, my name's Wembley, and I'm from Fraggle Rock. It's <laughs> oh no, I'm wow. I got confused. I'm I'm Ed Kearsley, and I do uh, <laughs> I make comic books like Radical, <laughs> you could see there. Um, Ed Kearsley Art on the Instagram, Radical Comic Book on the Facebook, and all my stuff is on Comics Shop if you want to buy it. So get down there, and that's about it. So pass, awesome. it pass it over to Dana. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm DK, and you can find my work at DakotaStudios.com and Dakota Studios for Instagram and Facebook, everywhere else. Um, my comics are on my website. You can check them yep. out. Mm, yep. And... Yeah, that's about it <laughs> as well. <laughs> Wicked. Take us home, Alistair. Um, oh, I've got a website, Alistair Lockhart. Hang on, where's my... AlistairLockhart.net. And an Instagram, uh, AlistairLockhart.art. Uh, so yeah. you can look at my stuff there. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, check out Gems of War by 505 Games and Infinity Plus 2. And also Puzzle Quest 3 by 505 Games and Infinity Plus 2. They're available now um, on your mobile. Uh, if you like fantasy, if you like gem matching, well, <laughs> you'll probably like those rather a lot. Awesome. Um, and they look good too. <laughs> cool. Like you, mate. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Look, it was only a matter of time that I was going to get the award for being the hottest fair. <laughs> 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 well deserved. <laughs> Thank you. <so> <laughs> yeah, I didn't recognise him for a sec. <laughs> hey, hey, go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you, Dad Joe. Yeah. He's got yeah. good taste. Good man. Yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> that's awesome yeah dan's been snapping up everybody's books i think yes he has um well that's about it sizzle what do you think i think that was a bloody awesome show me too um thank you very much everyone for coming on and drawing and thank you so much to alistair who i keep calling thank alistair. you for having me it's been a Sorry pleasure yeah alistair i mean you've been on the show before you've been no stranger please because yeah yeah I'm glad we got to actually time. um get to talk to you at length, I was really anytime. I, I I never leave this room. They're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, bro. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> They're in the vents. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's bars on those windows, isn't there? I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a cell. That's what these are antenna. They keep them from reading the reading my thoughts through the fillings of my teeth. Oh, nice. <laughs> I need it's to get clever. me some of them. You would think that being part of the lizard person conspiracy, I would be one of the rich and powerful, but hey ho. Uh, the great singularity knows what he's doing, I suppose. All glory to the hive. <laughs> they need the drones to draw the cartoon for their comments for their video games. <laughs> and of course, check out my OnlyFans page. Well, on that note, I no, say so all glory to the hive, and away we go. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Well, Thanks, we drank. Thanks, we Pete. drew. We talked nonsense. Now it's time to say goodbye. Don't cry. Dry your eye. For there are many cool comics you can buy. Comics.shop is full of comics from a bunch of the creators you just watched. Amazing Tales by Dave Dye. The Devil's Toilet by Spedzi. Comics Presents featuring Ed Kearsley, Tony Manzi, Duncan Pranavicious, Peter Wilson, Lee Chalker, Zach George, and so much more. The list is longer than this outro. See you next Friday for more drinking and drawing. Alright Sizzle, press the button. Sizzle? Sizzle press the damn button. <laughs>